In this video, we're going to be setting up a service that will generate us a JALT token whenever we need one. And if you're not familiar with JALT tokens, I like to think of JALT tokens as it's like giving a user a key. So when the user logs in, we give them a key. And this key will allow them access to certain areas of our application. It's almost exactly like running an apartment. So let's say, for example, you go in to rent an apartment. Well, you, you pay up the money, you sign the lease, and they'll give you a key. Now, this key won't allow you access to everything, like all the different apartments, the maintenance areas, nothing like that. It will allow you a key to your front door, the lobby area, and that's it. Now, this key will expire after a certain amount of time. So let's say your lease runs out. Either you could renew the lease or you let the lease run out and the key will no longer be valid because the locks will be changed. And that's exactly like using a JALT token. To begin creating JALT tokens, what we'll do is we'll go inside of our core project. I already have a class created in there. And what we'll do is we'll set up a method to generate JALT tokens. I already began the process of setting up our service and that service is inside the core project inside the services and the token folder. So I went ahead and created an interface. This interface has one method in it. And then I implemented the interface within the token generator class. And now we got this generate token method. So whenever we call on this method, this is gonna return us a brand new token, a string. So this is gonna return a string. And here I'm passing in the identity user and I should have removed this, the roles and the claims before I push this up to GitHub, but I'm gonna remove it now. We're gonna be setting this up, the roles and the claims in the next couple of videos, but for now we don't need it, so I'm gonna remove it. And I'll make sure I jump back into the interface and remove this. And like I said, we'll come back and add that back in later when we go into roles and claims. I'll save this. So the first thing we wanna do inside of our generate token method is set up our claims. So we'll grab some information from our user and we'll set claims and I'll add that here. So now we have a variable called claims and inside this claims we'll store a list of claims. And this claim right here, I'm bringing that in from system security claims up here. And inside of this list, we could put as many new claims as we want. Now the reason we're getting this error right here for this JOT registered claim is we need to bring in a package and if we click on it and hit control dot, you'll notice that the package is not in here. So we need to install that into our core project. Down in the description, you'll find a link for the package that you need to install. And that is going to be this link right here. And that will send you to this page and you could just copy this. Now, if you're following along within your own project and you're in like a later version, like version five, for example, you want to make sure you install the correct version. But if you're following along within this project, it's currently version 3.1, and this is the package you want to install. So copy this. Inside the command line, navigate into the core project, the core folder, and then install the package. Now that we installed the package, now let's go ahead and pull this in. And you should see it in the dropdown, so we'll pull this in. Now here we're adding in the username, but you can add in additional information. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to copy this line, paste it, and we're going to add in the email. So if you hit dot, it gives you a whole list of different things you can add by default. And in this case, I'll choose email. And then we have an email within the user. So I'll add an email here. And for now, we'll only add two claims for this user. So the next thing we want to do is set up the key. And this key is very important. This key is, is how we're gonna verify our token. So what we do is we store like a secret key or a password on our, on our server. And whenever a token gets sent in, we verify that token by the secret key that we have in our configuration file in this case. So that's what this key is for. And if we pull in this, and we need to pull that in for Microsoft Identity Model Tokens. And then you want to pull in the encoding. And you want to pull that in from System Text. And we haven't set up a key yet within our configuration. And we'll do that after we're done within this method. But let's go ahead and set up the variable. So we need to set up a constructor. 
and we'll pass in the I configuration. And I'll call it config. And we'll bring that in from Microsoft Extensions Configuration. Then I'll go ahead and set a private variable for this. And whenever we want anything from our configuration file, we'll call on this. And that should take care of the error here. Now we want to set up our credentials. And I'm going to call it creds for short. And we're using the signing credentials method. We'll pass in the key and the signature as the second parameter. Next, we'll set up our token descriptor. And I called it token descriptor. So this is going to describe our token. And we're creating a new instance of the security token descriptor. And the subject, we're passing in all of our claims. And then the date time here, let's bring that in from system. And this token is going to expire in seven days. Our signing credentials, we already set that up right here. And then the issuer, and you want to make sure you spell this correctly since you're dealing with strings. And I just made that mistake actually. I misspelled this actually, and it took forever to debug. So you just want to make sure you double check this and spell these correctly. And we'll be setting this up within our configuration pretty soon. Now that we have our token descriptor, let's set up the rest. And here we're setting up our token handler and we're creating a new instance of the security token handler. And then we'll create a variable called token. And we'll create the token, passing in the token descriptor. And we want to make sure we pass back a string. So we're going to write the token and pass in the token. And this will return us a string. And that will be our token. Now we're going to be coming back and changing this in later videos, but this is a good start. So you want your token generator to look like this. Now we need to set up our configuration file. So let's save this. And inside of the API, let's open up our app setting development JSON file. And we want to set up our key, our issuer within our config file. So we'll open this up. We'll add in here our token information. So we'll add in the issuer, and that's going to be localhost 5000, and then this key. Now this key, it's very important you keep this top secret. You never want to send it off to the client or anything because this key is what we're going to use to verify the tokens. And also you, you don't want the key to be too short. You'll get an error for that. So this is a pretty good length. And also you want it to be very descriptive. Like you don't want it to be like the way I'm doing it here. You want it to be like all kinds of different characters and things like that. So now that we set up our issuer, our key, there's one more thing we want to do is we want to inject our new service here into our application. We want to tell our startup class about it. So let's open up the startup class. So control P and that's our startup class. And then inside of the configure services, right at the top, we'll bring in our new token generator. And I'll pull this in from our token folder and that should take care of both errors. So now that we're bringing in our token generator service, now we're ready to use it. So this video, we did a lot of setup work. We set up our service, our token generator service. We brought it into our application and now we're ready to use it. So we'll do that in the next video and we'll use it inside of the login method. So whenever the user logs in, we'll give them a brand new token and we'll do that next.